never buy this property unless you're ready to do work. And what I mean by work is lots of work. This is a foreclosure. And oftentimes you think you're getting a great deal on a home when you buy a foreclosure. However, if you've never done it before, it's very important to know the cost of things. Everything is expensive. Construction is expensive. Labor is expensive. And it's important to know, even if you do your cost research to fix something, typically the labor cost is just as much, if not more than the actual cost of materials. So let's take a look at this house. Now, before we walk into this house, you have to know that most of the foreclosures now are making you sign a hold harmless disclosure. That means that the asset management company, the mortgage company, the bank, whoever owns it, wants you to sign a waiver that says that if you fall through, you get a disease, you get mold, you get sick, you get whatever, you eat the pain. If the house is built before 1979, they are not gonna hold, you are not gonna hold them accountable for anything that should happen to you in the property. And that is a sure sign that beware. So as you come into a property like this, it's a full enclosure, and you can look down and see there's caution tape. Anytime you see caution tape, there's probably a hole in the floor or a little bit of a bump or, or you know, a, a decline in the floor itself. But here's the deal. You have to know that to replace a window like this, you're looking at a minimum. Now it's functional, right? It'll keep bugs out somewhat but you're looking at $250 a window and you gotta pretty much just count the windows within the house. The big thing that you don't really notice and you might if you look really close is there's a massive slope in the floor on this property. So as you go through, it may look like, well, it's a great little house, right? It's three bedrooms, it's one bath, it's, it's on two acres of land, which is phenomenal. The cabinets are nice, they're newer, it's granite. But when you see the slope in the floor like you've done, you see on this house, you gotta know it's gonna be anywhere from 15 to $40,000 to repair that, to fix that. And of course, any house that you purchase, you'll wanna have inspected by a home inspection company. But you have to know oftentimes when you buy a foreclosure, they won't turn on the utilities. They'll come in and winterize the property, meaning that they'll go through and they'll flush out all the lines, blow out all the lines, and then I'll put a solution within the plumbing system, and it's like an antifreeze that'll keep the pipes from freezing in the winter months. They turn off all the utilities. At that point, it gets moldy, gets mildy, gets musty. So you just never know when something's growing or could be growing in and around the house. So it's really important to always get a property inspected. And this may, on the, on the surface, it looks like a nice little house, but that's why I always say buyer beware. You have to just make sure that you know, that you know, that you know. Now, when you buy a foreclosure, you wanna have it inspected, and if they don't turn on the utilities, that's an expense that you're gonna to have to do. You're gonna to have to have the utilities temporarily turned on for, typically they do it for a 15 day minimum, as well as the water and the sewers. Some banks are just like, if you want it, you do it. And look, oftentimes it's not enough to just have a general home inspection. It's important as I'm standing right here in front of the breaker box, to have a licensed electrician look over the property because they'll pull this panel off they'll make sure there's no aluminum wiring they'll make sure it's pigtailed if it is does have aluminum wiring they'll make sure that there's no double tap breakers or wrong breakers wrong size breakers they'll do typically a little bit more detailed than the average home inspector now on properties similar to this all around the country oftentimes they're on what they call a treatment plan or a septic system they're also on a well and those are the things that you'll want to have tested. So what happens is when the electricity has been turned off on a property and hasn't ran for a while, the well pump settles, everything settles. And at that point, you can get bacteria backing up into the water system. So once you turn on the electrical, the pump turns back on to pull the water from the well, send it to the house. And at that point, you may be looking at an additional expense because the house has been sitting for typically months with no electricity. Now behind me here, you'll see the septic system. And anytime you see green pipe with the white cap, that's a sign that that's probably a newer system within five to seven years of age. The only way to really truly tell on a foreclosure if the system's new or not is to check with your local county and parish. Uh, and the environmental office will, keeps records of absolutely everything. So you'll wanna make sure. Now, if it hasn't been pumped and there's no record of it being pumped in the last two years, you'll wanna make sure that the system is pumped. And oftentimes most counties and parishes will not give you a clear letter stating that it's in good standing 
without having it pumped within the last two years. And another expense that you always have to consider is not just having a licensed electrician come and look at the property, but to actually have an HVAC contractor. So you see this is an AC unit. You can typically look on the units and see what tonnage, what size. Typically you're looking at, you know, for every six to 700 square feet, you want one ton. You wanna to make sure it's not under sized for the home and you also want to make sure it's not oversized for the home because that can be just as bad as an undersized unit but it will tell you the age and when they're sitting like this you got to turn on the utilities once again and have an hvac contractor look at that really put the gauges to it the home inspector is going to look at it but if the most part that's why most home inspectors say that you know have it inspected have it cleaned and checked by a licensed HVAC contractor. Now, one of the absolute most expensive items on a home, the largest thing that you'll have to replace on a home. So in other words, it's not anything that's gonna fall apart or fall in or, or uh, you know, be such a crazy detriment to the property, and that is the roof. The roof on a property is the most expensive thing to replace on the property. A roof on a house this size, and of course, and you can see that's a metal roof. So a metal roof will typically last about 30 years. A 30-year roof in the deep south where we are here in southern Louisiana will last about 20 to 25 years. Typically, those are Owens Corning roofs. And a lot of people say, there's no way. But I'm telling you, I've seen them things flap like a mud flap on an 18-wheeler because they get beat, beat, beat down by summer, summer, summer heat. But the roof is one of the most expensive things. So when you purchase a property, you've got to know that if that roof doesn't have a whole lot of life left in it, you have to prepare for that in the future because a roof on a house of this size is probably gonna run you seven to $8,000 and this is just an 1,100 square foot home. So look, I'm a real estate broker and have been for 30 years. The last thing I wanna do is talk anybody out of selling a house, but I owe a due diligence to anyone that hires me to represent them in the purchase of a piece of property, as well as on the selling side of a piece of property. This home, you just have to be aware of foreclosures such as this because you have to know that, well, if I gotta replace the windows and they're $250 a window, how much is that gonna be? And next thing you know, you add that up. And how much is the flooring? And what if I have to level the floor? And what if it's $30,000? And then you think this house is a deal at $100,000, but you, you you know that, well, I can probably live with the windows, but I gotta fix the flooring. And what if it's more? So if I, I, I bought it for 100,000, then I gotta put 30,000 in it. Now I'm $130,000 into this house. And what if the well's bad? What if the HVAC needs to be replaced? What if the roof is, close to or past its extended life? What if the water heater doesn't work? So you can see how buying a $100,000 or $110,000 property that's a foreclosure can add up really quick. And that's why I always say, do this if you're prepared and can physically do a lot of the work yourself. There's nothing wrong with buying a foreclosure, but you also have to keep all your options open because just when you think you're getting a deal and you're gonna have to put money into the property, you have to look into the unforeseen future. You have to look at well, what if I bought a house that was maybe five or seven or eight or 10 years old and the roof was still in great shape and the floors were nice and it was just moving condition and I paid more for that property, but I don't have to do as much work. Now, you also have to keep in mind and not to be the barrier bad news or Debbie Downer here, but that's the stuff that you can see. We haven't crawled under the house yet and we haven't crawled in the attic. We just don't know if there's roof leaks. We just don't know if there's more structural issues. We know that if a floor is sloping in a house, was it sloping because it's settling? Or is it sloping because the termites have been there for three years chewing on those floor joists? You just don't know. But at the end of the day, that's the risk that you take. And the other thing is you have to look at, they don't create smell of vision yet. So you can't smell the inside of the house. Unfortunately, we walk into houses where squatters have been there and there's puke and vomit on the floors and there's urine and feces on the floor and it's an absolute disgusting mess because people just went in there and oftentimes I've seen where homeowners just let it go to hell, you know? And sometimes it's the property owner that bought the property but they've rented it out to a tenant and the tenant has absolutely destroyed the property. So for whatever reason, I tell people, you know, Oftentimes when you're buying a property, whether it be you're gonna buy it to live in it, you know, they don't create smell of vision, so you gotta look at them and you gotta know. Or have somebody like myself that is experienced. I'm gonna step outside of this, this one. Um, Cause it's too much to take in in one breath. 
So you just wanna make sure you do your due diligence. You wanna make sure that whatever it is that you do on any property, that uh, you're comfortable with it.